Yeah, how's everything? <laughs> Are you the first one? Good. Yeah, how's it I going? I think so. Waiting. Hey, uh, man. Michael. Oh, here, let me get I'm well. <clears throat> let me get the, <clears throat> let's get the camera out here since, uh, since we're in public. I don't want to make noise about everything. Yeah. Um, Hello. <laughs> guess who's who's guest? Uh, this is Andreas. Let me try one more time. Oh, put your, put your name in there so we know. Um, uh, I'm gonna try one more time. Refresh see. and put your name in there. Y'all don't mind. So Andreas is. Uh, Andreas is working on recruiting, so he's in the background. Uh, maybe maybe we can have Andreas fill in where he's at. Andreas, maybe you want to fill in since we're still waiting for a couple of people. We're recording this for everybody so the world can hear. But tell us where you are on the air stuff. Give us a little right. update. Yeah, so I can tell you like the different let's say, phases which I've gone through. Um, the first yeah. phase was to recruit a different LinkedIn of, of existing MEM members. Um, and there were not so many. I noticed that um, existing what members? To be very, existing uh, like yeah, like um, the instructors, I got the names of the existing instructors for, for the Steam camp. Um, and I found a few, especially through your account that I contacted. Um, but you since mean this, existing potential or Michelle, Chris and myself and Jessica? So yeah, basically I, I went through your, your lists of uh, contacts through LinkedIn, trying to find similar people uh -huh. in your existing um, uh, network, more or less. Um, and after this, what I did was creating a database from new people who are not, some people are connected but not connected by uh -huh. uh, doing Boolean search for uh, people who have both Steam and Makerspace profiles. Uh, so I got a list of about 160 names, which I've been contacting now the last month or so. Um, there were some people who were interested, but most people fall basically towards the end when they have to make the choice regarding uh, what the risk that I have to take and the potential of not getting revenue. Um, so basically whenever they came to the, they have to order this development kit um, and some people fell towards the marketing part. Um, there are still about five people in discussion, um, but to be honest, I, I don't feel a very strong, let's say, feedback from those. Yeah, uh, yeah. five-legged dogs are quite rare. So um, what I've done now is basically, well, plan deep. Um, so we created this job advertisement. Um, and initially, I haven't received any. I've received like one half application from that one. Um, after that, I partnered with Impact Hub, uh, yeah. and now I'm getting help to advertise our job advertisement throughout their network, which reach around 17,000 social entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a wider, let's say it's a wider net, more quantity this time instead of quality. I'm trying to see if. Back it to sell. Um, once they come to the actual like yeah. decision points, yeah, yeah, well, that's good. Uh, what are your next steps now? So my next step is uh, get out this advertisement to seventeen thousand people, and I'm trying to get uh, well, basically see what happens. So this time it will yeah. be more passive, uh, laying low and see if if people react to that one as well as continue with the existing five and seeing if, if we can get more references for that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. I have a couple of conversations next week, so we'll see how, how those goes. Um, but it would something which maybe is possible to work on is to uh, one of the things which comes up quite often is the both the price for the development kit and the uncertainty of whether or not we will manage to get participants for them. Uh, as well as a lack of a clear marketing plan that they feel is enough to get participants for their uh, mm -hmm. for the workshop, basically. So if we can, everyone basically agrees that the curriculum is really good. So if we manage to make the marketing plan 
to give them the same impression as, as the curriculum, then I think we would have much better chance. Or if we manage to prove that previous workshops actually provides uh, us with participants, then maybe that will also ease their worries, basically, yeah. because it's still a big commitment for people to, to offer nine days. And yeah. that maybe they will get people back. Yeah. Um, only update, only update I can offer on that is yeah we're you know the startup, permanent startup program at OSC, but we do have four four events lined up for for June twenty second in the United States. There's a guy through a contact that basically have a captive audience of high schools, private high schools, where they're guaranteeing twelve plus students. That's awesome. That's that's really good. And that's the kind of that's one route of doing it. This is about identifying uh, summer camp program managers. So, so I went to find mm -hmm. this. I went through. I got a contact to a principal through a friend, principal in, of a private school in California called Pacific Ridge High School, Pacific Ridge School. And then he he went to a conference and he said, Hey, there's four, three more people that want to run it at the same time on June twenty second. So that's a uh, that's a uh, that's a further event. But but you know we're building. We're we're trying to mind my own our own business and <laughs> try to get this uh, up yeah. and running. Um, yeah. So Can I ask you about like the uh, you, you mentioned that you have a friend who's going to help with marketing. Uh, right. right. Is, and you mentioned that he's going to make a video. Do you know yeah. if there's any no. other parts? Yeah, that's coming out like in the next day or two, a few days. Right. Uh, so I, I reviewed the video. It's, it was a rough cut. Of a video dedicated to instructors. Here's like, you know, here's for an instructor. Here, here's how you create aha moments in people as you teach them. So that's that's going to come out in a few days. Um, it's being worked on right now, so that possibly can help. It should. I mean, it does cover like, okay, what's the what's the whole picture? It's a promo video. It's a, like a five minute one though that describes. Uh, it's really an advertising to to new teachers who are uh, with the intent of exciting them about the program. So that's the idea there. Um, yeah. So that's coming. That's that's uh, a few days. Yeah. Uh, all right. But was there anything else except the video that he was going to help with, like in terms of uh, social media marketing or marketing? Uh, There's the videos. Help. Beyond that, um, I was going to ask regarding. I mean, we're kind of in the background trying to scheme up a, a, a marketing strategy. That's what we're aiming for, but. Mm. Right now, just the strategy is just rough notes with no execution. Really, it's like contact items, high items on agenda are contact principals of of schools or summer program managers as one way. Mm -hmm. Or mm. Uh, the other thing that I would just like to try is is the idea of the. I mean, it's different, but it's it's all over the place. It's it's the idea of the the corporate retreat concept, where over a weekend you build one of the larger printers. But that's not the steam camp. That's a little different. But they all are so related that it feeds into each other. So it's it's interesting in that way. But other than that, it's been running steam camps. It's like every steam camp. There's there's a couple more people that want to do it. Interestingly, Jeremy from Washington State uh, I passed on the instructor exam if you guys have seen it instructor exam on the wiki so take a look at that he already submitted an eight-minute video where he went through all the steps in eight minutes including a first print calibration logging part library <coughs> design and FreeCAD in eight minutes he did that so mm -hmm. he's the first poster child of okay that yeah this is the kind of uh, level of expertise you got to get to so it's uh, instructor exam let me p paste the link and uh, so the basic one, the basic steps one through five. Uh, let me paste that in the link. So anyone who wants to do that, just do it. And we can, uh, then you're in a good position to be an instructor. We can put you on as a name that we trust you can do the technical part of, of this. So that's where we're at. Uh, but the idea is it's like hit the ground running. Every event we get more people interested like Jessica or Jeremy from the last one yeah. and Holger also being interested now Holger is gonna sh even show up for the summer of extreme design build which is awesome so uh, we're building momentum but it's it's um, you know it's 
uh, startup mode. So outside of kind of aggressively right. pursuing a, a schedule, um, yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot that can be done. I mean, we don't have the resources to do it. We're kind of like yeah. learning and doing everything. Yeah. Okay. So. Correct. Okay. Um, so in this event, we wanted to <laughs> to to check in on uh, collaborating with European team. Like, I wanted to see if we there's a way to co coordinate on the April event. And then the other thing is refining the what the four day looks like because we're gonna run one 14th through the 17th. It's gonna be New Zealand. I'm going to New Zealand. There's Boston, and there's Richmond with Chris. So three locations right now, and we're doing a four day. So a simpler one, trying to refine what we can from the learnings of the last one. So um, see how we refine what we did last time. So let's take a look at that Steam Camp curriculum. Let me paste that in the chat. So that's one. And then the other question was coordinating in the April, which is the one after that. And the one after that, personally, I'll be in Hong Kong doing their steam camp there. They they got shut down because of disease, so I couldn't do it in March. But they're inviting me to in April, uh, basically for the April date on the on the schedule. So uh, let's look at the schedule. I'll paste that link in there. Um, so maybe first let's see, like I wanted to touch in with with Benedict on what your thoughts are. Michelle emailed me saying, yo man, let, yeah, we can do like different directions, but I want to see how much we can coordinate simply because um, the big deal that I'd like to see is that related to a, to a product development methodology that changes the world. And that would mean significant effort on a controllable time scale that yields yields significant product as we will experiment with in the September 2 and the date would be September 2 launch of the cordless drill professional grade open source challenge made from waste plastic an experiment to change economic history so in that kind of an experiment we're looking at I mean this is literally thousands of people that are going to collaborate with a uh, $250,000 prize so this is going to be no joke and a real serious attempt at does open source work? Can we get a large collaborative process? So with that said, that's kind of how I approach the event in, in Hamburg on April 24. Let's keep practicing the, the larger and larger, ever larger scale collaboration to the point that it becomes effective. Like Linux does it right now. They have currently like a thousand full-time developers. Like right now they have a thousand people working full-time. Uh, they're all funded by companies. There's no volunteers there at all, uh, hardly, these days. It used to be all volunteers. Now it's pretty much everyone's getting paid. But the same model applies here. It's like, okay, how do we get a lot of people and people that can also get paid for doing that? Uh, so that means we're generating significant product and uh, enterprises like a like a viable cordless drill that dents a $10 billion market within, you know, in a few years that that's you know that's that's a promise that can be theoretically achieved and let's see if we can do it but uh, so so with that prelude what are your thoughts on um, what are the coordination points for how we can do like the um, April so so you guys right now want to do so what's what's your current program and, and is there a way like we can we can put that on the same dates um, let's see. So what are the dates in question? Like I, I was going to ask if you guys can move it. I mean, is it possible for you guys to move it to the, to start at the same time? And does it make sense? Like, do you guys think it makes sense? W tell me your thoughts about that, Benedict. What, what are you thinking? Um, yeah. <clears throat> Hello, first of all, <laughs> great to see you again. And, yeah, um, see you all. We uh, kind of have the date set, and we already have some confirmations for participation, so mm -hmm. uh, okay. I'm not sure whether we can shift it. I mean, I can ask, but so I think we can collaborate anyways, because I, have, cause I think we have uh, an overlapping updates anyways, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. uh, could, you, could you tell me which dates um, your camp is going to be? 
Yes. Yeah, so so look at the um, the length the steam camp schedule. So so we're looking at twenty four, uh, yeah. April twenty four, May two. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that fits perfectly. I, I think because <coughs> we only start at April twenty ninth. Twenty nine. Okay. Right. Wednesday and um, uh, we we end at May uh, at Sunday, which is May third, I think. So there can't be more overlapping, anyways, because okay. we don't want to hold a nine-day okay. event. Yep. Uh, let's see. So let me take a look at it. April twenty-nine, May third, April twenty-nine. So Wednesday. So it's a five-day or four-day. Right. Five-day. Okay. We we said that the Sunday, the fifth day, is kind of optional. We uh, like just okay. uh, if we need it, we we have it. But uh, okay. it's not <clears throat> people can go earlier. That's the the, the idea actually. But uh, if they need the day, then they they can stay. So maybe I can tell <clears throat> you what we we uh, thought of um, setting how to set up the pro the the curriculum. Yeah. <clears throat> so. We have um, uh, two groups actually. First group is that are participants that want that are interested in becoming instructors themselves in the future, and the idea is that they stay the whole um, during or for all the all of the day. So they come Wednesday. And um, they get a deep insight into the D3D Universal and also some economics and governance issues uh, with regards to um, yeah, holding a steam camp and uh, running a micro factory. And then they also stay at the Saturday, at the fourth day. And then at, at this, uh, that day, the second group of participants arrives which only builds a D3D Universal within one day. Mm -hmm. And um, the idea is that the first group, the people who are interested in becoming an uh, instructor, then <clears throat> train to instruct um, to build the D3D <clears throat> to the ones that uh, come, that are like regular participants, mm -hmm. right? So they already have, they can see whether they really like this or, or not. And um, so the idea is that <clears throat> if we cannot manage to build the D3D Universal in that one day, then we have the Sunday as an option, as a backup, uh, so we can definitely finish it. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, like, how many people would join? We, we so far have um, Holger, um, Shell, and Peter, and um, a colleague here at my university, as, um, or actually two colleagues as um, okay. kind of instructors, like super instructors which who are uh, like, uh, like yeah, managing the event. Uh, not all of them will be there all of the time, but they will um, be there, uh, yeah at least uh, a day. And so um, so we have like two pr these two purposes for the, for the campus, which is to have like regular participants that can just be there for one day and take home the D3 Universal with them. And then we have the second purpose, uh, which is the, um, to instruct future instructors, uh, instructors of STEAM camps. But then we also have a third purpose, which is um, to initiate a um, commons-oriented or commons-based version of grabcat.com, which I, uh, yeah, I think I emailed you before mm -hmm. about. And um, yeah, we want to initiate this at that day. And to do this, we have a third part of, or a third group of participant, uh, participants, which are mainly computer scientists. And part of that group is Peter, <laughs> who will be there uh, at least for a day. And um, yeah, so we, we want to have them there, uh, these computer scientists, to make them uh, become familiar with the issue of um, collaborative, uh, distributed, or remote product, open source hardware product development, which is, um, 
yeah, we I think we can learn a lot there from um, open source product development uh, in software. Um, but still, I think it's, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure, but I guess it's more complex even than it is the case with um, software development. So there is, um, yeah, um, a lot uh, thinking that needs to be done and a lot of research actually, which is why we want to also engage um, like scholars in uh, of computer science mm -hmm. and uh, we yeah. have some <clears throat> here in Hamburg at least we have um, uh, a department which is interested in, in coming we don't have uh, definite confirmation yet but I'm confident that they will come so <clears throat> um, so then I, th I think we have the necessary uh, know-how which we can reach to realize this project but um, the, to get, getting the resources is kind of um, yeah, an issue and there's different options we have. Um, and, and I know this is like off topic right now, but I'll just mention it in two sentences or so, uh, which is an event in, in like an innovation camp, uh, an innovation uh, summit here in Hamburg in May, where we will present this vision of a common spaced uh, GrabCat to uh, to private investors, uh, public development banks, politicians, any kind of decision makers. And we really hope to, um, yeah, to have a confirmation that the public development of Bank of Hamburg will uh, invest in it by then. So private investors would be more confident or more likely to join. And um, another option of getting resources for it to realize this idea is um, research funds. We, we're thinking of uh, applying for Horizon 2020 project, um, which is the biggest, uh, yeah, I, I think the biggest um, research and development fund in Europe. And it's like, you can get up to 20 million for uh, time spans of maybe five years or so. So it's really, uh, I guess, substantial amount of money that you can get there. So yeah, so initiating this pro uh, this this project is uh, like the third purpose of our camp here in Hamburg. And yeah, that being said, I think uh, yeah, you have some some idea of what we will do here. Oh yeah, and um, number wise, we um, can go up to twenty people on the Saturday for the regular participants and up to six, maybe eight participants uh, for the first group, for the instructor, or possibly instructor uh, participants group. Eight for potential instruct instructors? Yes. Okay. Um, when is the thing, the kickoff of the Commons-based GrabCAD happening? Is that su Sunday? Um, we're, it depends when the computer scientists want to come. Uh, we haven't, I, I said that they can come any day they want because it's like, yeah. So there's not a certain date they have to come. It's just that they come anyway, to make them come anyways would also already be a, uh, would already be good. Uh, during any of the April 29th to May 3rd days? Yes. Okay. Yeah. That sounds good. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you guys pretty much got that yeah, on the schedule. So let's, I mean, yeah, let's see how much we can coordinate that. Uh, let's see the, the build that were, was going to happen for other locations would be, let's see. Um, what day was that? I mean, initially it was the 24th. We had it on the 24th through the May 2nd. Um, yeah. And and an idea that yeah. <clears throat> Holger told me uh, yesterday was to um, has to do with has to do with the issue to to have to get a second z axis on the D three D universal. Yeah. Um, so Holger mentioned to um, to have this kind of as a challenge for the uh, particip instructor participants group. Yeah. Um, to to make them develop the the second z axis within the camp in Hamburg and. Mm -hmm. So then this would kind of be great for, for the computer scientists to see how, what's the issue with the product development. But um, I, I, I think that just to make sure to give them like a really good product in the end, um, we should make sure that 
<coughs> we can develop the second z or give send them home with the second z axis anyways so we should uh it should be developed uh in advance of the camp so we, before the camp starts and michelle uh, i think said that he was going to look into it but i don't know if he if he has the chance to, to manage it yeah um yeah okay so that's potential development either before or during the camp yeah okay okay yeah so i mean the dates if we if we're doing if we are gonna do like the 24th through the the second um only thing we can do if we wanted to coordinate like for the one day build uh, it we could try moving our thing since we don't have any any plans any any commitments really yet if you're starting that April 20 uh, no the build the actual build on a second right so that's the one day Saturday the 2nd of May right I mean we will build uh, printers with the other group before as well but it, it'll happen probably during the first two days so on Wednesday Thursday but it would be great, I guess, if we manage to <clears throat> um, add this development part to, the, to our curriculum, to have some coordination there for the purpose of developing a, 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 a GrabCat alternative. Um, okay, say that again. So, so you're <coughs> you're gonna be built training people how to build like the first days. 29th, 30th, we'll be building parts, but then, then the swarm, like, mm -hmm. like the, the public event, that's on the second, right? Right. It would make sense if we could, I mean, the way I could see, since we, we're going to do the one day build, uh, we wanted to do a one day build in the other locations. I mean, it would make sense if we move ours to start on the second, which, in which case, um, we could have that part, but I mean, how do you meaningfully collaborate on that when, when we're just building things out? Um, the thing we can share is, you know, if, yeah, we can share some of, some of the, the event, like as in the presentation or, or whichever, if assuming that the internet is really good, if, so, so, um, so there's one. there's one other camp uh, at the same time, right? Uh, in uh, am I right? Which well, is... no, I, I I think there'll probably be four four, four other at ones the same time. Oh, okay. at the same time. Probably probably four. Um, we're getting new people. Like for example, the New Zealand guys and in, instructor and in training. So so we'll see what happens from that. But yeah, no multiple events as trying to grow that number. Uh, on a reg just continuously um, I mean yeah I mean that's yeah I mean the the initial notion was that I mean the first four days are where you know we're learning a bit and checking in but it was really for the Pi tablet or the development project for the five project days where the collaboration is really meaningful so ie that we're all producing assets and contributing to part libraries and coordinating actively, very actively uh, on the development across the different locations. That's that's the kind of, yeah, we didn't see a lot of that uh, during the first camp, but that's that's the initial intent to, to show how we are effectively collaborating across different locations. Um, for, us, for the specific project where all of us are on it, it's not scattered, it's very focused. We've got everybody's eyes looking at the specific project of the five project days so yeah um since that's not really there i don't know yeah I, I don't know what to do just uh we can possibly consider just starting on the first day but then uh, that's that's like the real overlap but if there's not the really the five days i mean then I think the, the camps could go around at, at a similar time. We can say, advertise that, okay, we've got the thing in, in Germany, here's the flavor and all that we have there, and now here's the other ones around the world. So it's an option from, from um, 
a different set of locations where the other four locations would be very much coordinated at least on the project days and as much coordinated on the first four days as possible as well so that uh, the idea being that all the instructors share the instructor duty so each instructor brings a very concrete well-refined curriculum to the place so yep yeah. um yeah okay well yeah i don't know what else to say but yeah we can at least uh, uh, collaborate on advertising different events if we can do that so um yeah but otherwise go kind of a little bit bit different directions on that which all which all build up to the same thing uh what are your thoughts on say the investors in that um yeah i, I really investors. i really like that you mentioned how um linux gets funded yeah because that's uh, really a th i think a model which we can learn from because linux is uh, also commons based and we want to make grabcat alternative also commons based but still there's private uh, investors um i mean yeah so it's it's uh, yeah it's something we will we will look into i think yeah i mean the metaphor for linux is that it's the micro factories that start up that fund the developers cuz the micro factory for the software case is a software company like Amazon or IBM. So I think the clear analog is we build a micro factory, that thing has economic power, that thing funds further R&D. That's the model. Like I just be careful like uh, from my point my point of view in terms of okay, if you get private investors that are just investors, um I call that part of structural evil in the sense of uh, uh like the separation of investor from owner that's part mm -hmm. of the pickle we're in today like investors get 80 percent of the wealth and the workers get 20 percent or this something like that the the image needs to be 80 percent of the workers get the wealth and the investors are the workers are the people producing the designs and everything else so i i don't know how you process that if you get external investors but just i would just say be careful how you do it what are your thoughts on that any any considerations because you yeah, mentioned yeah, private yeah. investors I mean, <clears throat> I mean the the idea of um open source hardware for me is to really um democratize profit making because uh i think that with with open source uh profit goes local um because just uh because it's um it's uh yeah there's it's it's a uh, you know I, I developed this theory in my master thesis and it's uh quite complex so i have problems to put it in a few sentences but mm -hmm. um uh one but yeah on the on the other hand um i think there's if we think uh for example there's a, an, an engineering office here in uh in hamburg which is interested in participating in this mm -hmm. as well and if you think of them um why would they uh who have to pay their uh like um uh, they, they, what they produce is designs, not, not products. Okay, so mm -hmm. if what would make them put their uh, products, um, their designs, which they uh, need to make money from in like a short period of time, mm -hmm. uh, under a uh, why would they make this free, right? So I think at least for um, a a short period, there it makes sense to to have an option of putting designs on a blockchain. Um, that way, you can somehow restrict the um, like the the flow of this design and the the use and uh, create uh, exchange value in a short period of time, and you can also um, generate um, yeah ex or use this exchange that this created exchange value for uh, paying private investors and make this interesting for them um then on the long run i think you will um yeah not need these these uh like private resources anymore to pr fund um this such platforms mm -hmm. so this is my my thoughts on this yeah did you write a thesis on the topic yes can you share it uh yeah sure <laughs> <laughs> i think there's some flawed assumptions in there <laughs> yeah, I'm happy to hear your uh, to hear your comments on it. Yeah, your critique. <clears throat> My pleasure. <laughs> no, but I mean, you're right now. You're going the direction.
kindly speaking, the direction that, which is the the issue that I think software has solved with the the open source. Like I heard you say the word restrict access or manage the value chain in a for pay access uh, for pay method. The general general statement there is once you have to get into very tight accounting as such it becomes very complicated it becomes a, a difficult problem to solve so yeah that's it, what you're saying is like like your proposition yeah very very difficult and that's that's why i think the the open source license says do whatever you want sorry we're not going to manage the um like that that wealth generation part like yeah no there's a whole discussion there and i think that that kind of goes back into the discussion of just on philosophically like the, the stuff i hear from the the p2p foundation with um your production licenses where they're trying to manage the value chain in a way that's not open source anymore and um, yeah no it's like once I think just once we lose the open source aspect then no I think hard. I think you can um, with a if you have such a platform you can make the contributor decide which license he wants to um, mm -hmm. contribute his design under you know whether yeah. he can he can make it open source in the definition of your definition which is more it's, it's a deeper kind of open source i would yeah. say but you can all, maybe also put it on a blockchain which the fab city foundation mm -hmm. prefers with its fab chain uh mm -hmm. solution mm -hmm. yeah or you put it under a um put it under a uh, reciprocity license like the p2p foundation suggests right but i think what is important is to have a one platform for different open source hardware communities because that really uh, makes creates has the potential for a lot of synergies which are currently not used you know because there's all all uh, open source communities uh, or open source hardware communities have their own platforms yeah and yeah. they they don't have common standards and right. uh, therefore not really uh, to uh, create synergies. So. Yeah, no, that's good. You, what you, the advantage of what you're saying is it is inclusive. So uh, that's core to our mission. I, I say collaborative design for a transparent and inclusive economy of abundance. Yeah, what you are saying does meet the inclusivity. You're not <clears throat> not limiting anybody. So if we we can create a platform where everyone can play and actually works out, yeah, that would be great. Would be awesome. So so what will the um, the product development for the uh, op the cordless drill uh, be? Which which platform do you use for that? Is it is it open to the to the participants? Oh or? yeah, oh yeah, of course, of course. I mean, so Hero X, but the platform is wikis, docs, and FreeCAD, and mm. and part libraries and repos. I mean, the platform doesn't exist, and it has to be mm. pretty flexible to allow anything. So, but no, I mean the same thing. It's an extrapolation of this of the open source microfactory Steam Camp to a much larger collaborative effort. I mean, that's kind of the groundwork we're setting up saying okay these are common tools that are well well developed we're just going to put them together to a particular particular use of large co large collaboration yeah 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 peter has some uh, made some concrete suggestions of how this such a platform could be uh, set up mhm mm okay uh, where is that on peter log peter peter I'll see you in Belize, though. Yeah, we will. We will see each other. Yes. We'll talk about it all in Belize. Yeah, that's great. But uh, in in short, yeah, I already mentioned it. So when um, when I was in Belgium, uh, I think we briefly discussed it. Uh, uh, the thing that I have in mind and it's basically making use as much as possible of everything we already have. The wiki, mm -hmm. for example but um, kind of automate the process to make sure yeah. that the wiki yeah. remains uh, consistent. So oh, yeah. Proper versioning and so that's the main idea. Okay. Okay. Do you have written notes? Because I, I didn't see anything of that nature on your log yet. Is, is, did you write anything down about it yet or not yet? Uh, no, I haven't. That's the okay. main idea in my head now, but I okay. guess we need to make this more concrete for... Um, uh, the, the steam camp uh, that we're going to do in Hamburg uh, so I will at some point yeah uh, write it up unfortunately I'm crazy busy so uh, yeah yeah but uh, I, I'll make sure that uh, at some point it will uh, the, the, the concrete plan will yeah will be uh, somewhere on the wiki or uh, 
in the program of the Steam plan, for example. Okay. Okay, that sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah, so only other thing I wanted to cover is on the planning for the next learning from you guys on on the tool change like Holger and Peter on the CNC milling and all that plotting tool chains with KiCad and all of that. So uh, can you take a look at the and comment maybe or maybe we can kind of wrap up and comment on it but I, I wanted your comments on that so there's the steam nine day nine day oh shit. yeah steam camp nine day curriculum let me close this again um, it's it's what I pasted in uh, in the chat there already um, but that's kind of like what we're looking at uh, where it's highly relevant to Jessica and Chris so <clears throat> let's see Jessica who are Jessica and Chris where, where we'll be doing it but then Peter and Holger like maybe you can give us some feedback and uh, on that because that, that's kind of what I'm thinking um, so day one is pretty much solved day two we're pretty good day three is where you guys I think have done decent development so if we can I don't know how much you guys are gonna work on that at all or anything but uh, KiCad lesson yeah so I already gave a brief uh, tutorial to yep. the game the yep. location uh, I think Michel has the video somewhere on this uh, I, I saw it. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, thank you for that. We can use that and just oh. some. Mm -hmm. Yep. Great. Yeah. Uh, so the the only problem is is that I used I believe um, so I did I created a keycap design initially. Uh, it was kind of a coincidence in the Christmas holiday. I created a keycap uh, Arduino strip board design. And uh, during uh, the days in Ghent, I extended this keycat to basically make uh, this keycat design to make a proper PCB. And the idea was to plot and drill everything with uh, the, the files uh, that uh, were generated from keycat. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't manage to do so. Uh, I think. Um, the firmware of the 3D Universal doesn't allow me to control the, the or to set the Z height for some reason. Um, so it needs a little bit of development for the D3D uh, uh, Universal. Um, but it would be, yeah, I think it would be uh, really cool if we could improve the plotting and. Um, so the designing keycat, uh, so I think that that kind of works. So Holger and I did, um, so I created this um, uh, PCB design for the Arduino and Holger worked on the PCB design for the, the light dimmer. And actually that's much easier to plot because the components are larger. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, and um, so I guess for a first step to really develop this tool chain, uh, uh, this uh, tool chain flow of using KiCad and then export it to SVG and then trying to plot it, mm -hmm. then probably the PCB design that Holger did for the uh, light dimmer would be uh, uh, the best start. So for an Arduino, the, the, the pins of, of this uh, AVR328 are pretty close to each other. So you need pretty precise plotting for that. And with the light dimmer, it's, uh, well, the pins are bigger. So that would be, yeah. I guess, yeah. a good first step. And um, yeah, and then uh, I think Michel uh, had the idea to work on a tool hat for the D3D with a plotter and a drill in one mm. so that you can um, mm. maybe even in software to offset those two distances plot and then immediately drill the holes oh. uh, together with that as well. Uh, so I think that would be a pretty cool extension to what we already have. 
Um, mm. So yeah, that that was basically where we uh, left. Uh, the last day I had to leave, but I think Holger had some success mm. with drilling uh, as well. Um, but I haven't seen that uh, personally, so maybe Holger can fill in. Uh, fill me in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did uh, actually, in fact, uh, the last thing we did was walk the steps to Hold your, and Holger, any, anything to add to that? Uh, only that uh, we did this to the Can you speak up? I can hardly hear you. The mic is very low. Is that better now? Or? No. No. Oh, okay, then, so, um, then I'm out. <laughs> Hardly can hear you. Okay. Uh, can you hear me now uh, without, without headset? It's very soft. I mean, we can barely hear you, but maybe try speaking. Oh, okay, so uh, what, there you go. Yeah, what we did was one, one successful drill. And we had a video or have a video yeah. up uh, yep. on YouTube. Have you seen that, Marcin? Yeah. So at least so in, in principle, um, it's um, it's working. So um, yeah. And coming back to the the dimmer uh, circuit, I think that would be feasible. Um, I perhaps, think that um, would be feasible. Um, and perhaps um, maybe a, we can. Uh, I can probably have, oh. have, um, have a circuit that let's say controls the motor for the drill. Because right now we're running it full steam and we're having problem um, mm -hmm. with the power supply, uh, at least on our side, we, we cannot hook it up to, to the um, that we can yeah, basically plot and drill. And then the Arduino could um, control the motor, so, so that would be in perhaps you know, have pieces coming together nicely. Yeah, yeah. No, I think what we have already, I think it's very positive, the idea that, okay, we can do plots, we can do drills. That's great. And now for the, the steam camp, since it's experimental, I mean, to teach people to go through that process, even they, if they don't get a finished product, they will have good, you know, good ability to make 3D prints or make plots. But if we don't perfect those tool chains that's the whole point it's like here you've been shown the tools of how to do that and if you want to continue with it it's going to take more effort for you to learn that more carefully um, but the basic things like moving the mm -hmm. head around and doing things with it that is doable so I, I think that would be interesting enough and then we can build upon it so yeah we can take a look at what you have and 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 get the newer version of KiCad out and and do what we can with it. Um, Chris, what are your thoughts? Chris and Jessica? I mean, I agree that if we have the curriculum well organized, we can present it and people can uh, continue to develop their skills with it after the event and the, you know that it, there's not time in the event to do more than kind of an introduction but people have the experience to see it work and see it happen and um some experience hands-on experience i think they're you know myself included it's the fastest way to learn mm -hmm. yeah yeah absolutely so i feel confident about leading that kind of process and the, th the place in in new zealand is going to be a high school so some high school kids but um, otherwise, people, people who, the one instructor in training and other people from the community, I think it, it can work well. Chris, any comments? Uh, yeah, no, I, I, um, I completely agree with, with Jessica there. And uh, the, uh, to have, um, uh, to keep momentum go to going after, after the event and allowing people to, uh, to continue to feel like part of um, the community of, of what, especially of what in particular they're working on. Uh, I'm really impressed with Jer uh, uh, Jeremy and, and Jessica's uh, continued progress on the Raspberry Pi. And um, yeah, just keeping that um, yeah. moment going after that's really a good uh, metric of, of uh, success for the camps participants. You know, we won't be able to know all the skills, but have all of the literacy to continue with developing them. 
Well, Jeremy's a, an awesome case because he already did the instructor exam. That's pretty amazing. I mean, he totally dove into it and uh, learned the free CAD, is contributing to the Pi. He's doing the part libraries. So, yeah, a person that wants to take it further, they can, by all means. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I don't know what else to say in this meeting. I think we're, we're good. The, well, the thing is... Uh, I just uh, wanted to add um, about the April camp in Hamburg that uh, I've been uh, looking into using Git. Um, I'm going to do an experiment with uh, the Universal, uh, putting, in, putting it on Git and uh, mm -hmm. using the assembly workbench. Um, so uh, uh, we have a, a, a major branch and the parts individually can be updated, maybe uh, have some uh, on side branches that people are working on, we can merge certain parts and then just update the assembly. But I will document it uh, while I'm uh, looking into it. And it could be combined with uh, IPFS, uh, so it can be decentralized. Uh, running uh, clones, completely decentralized. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, about the z-axis, the extra z-axis, mm -hmm. I'm going to make the 3D models, mm -hmm. putting it in WebGL and nice. um, putting it on, hit, uh, on HitLab also. Nice. So, uh, that's on the agenda and I, I'm looking forward to doing uh, the, the printing, milling, even milling. I'm looking into milling also. There's not only plotting, yeah. but uh, putting milling heads on the for milling the PCBs. Yeah. That would be uh, great because in certain cases, if you organize camps like with, uh, uh, towards children, uh, you can't use actions. Mm. So uh, that's why I want to look into the, the mm. milling of PCBs. Then they can yeah, participate in like designing a PCB and then milling it immediately yeah. without using actions. But yeah, that on the side. No, that's good. That's great. Um, that sounds awesome. good. Can I ask you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Um, so, I'm uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. So this is Peter. So, yeah. Um, so, uh, so, how do you see um, the organization of the speed camp? What is your do you prefer to um, everybody does the same program? So, for example, my, my experience uh, when uh, with a Ghent uh, case, so we had m uh, trouble setting up the printers because of the difference in uh, 240 and 110 volts and uh, the slightly different uh, adapter. But um, so we were late on the schedule, and actually we didn't. Um, work on the, uh, res uh, the Raspberry Pi tablet, actually. Mm -hmm. But but the collaboration within the group was kind of uh, yeah. cool, I think, because so I knew, for example, about KiCad, but I don't know much about uh, uh, electronics, older, more about yeah. the electronics. And then it turned out that the bear was an Inkscape master who could fix the Inkscape that was output from uh, KiCad. So it was a uh, it was very dynamic and very mm -hmm. confluent or something. So yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. think I think it worked actually pretty well. Although we didn't adhere to the same um, um, schedule, basically. So, but but do you prefer to have it more? Everybody does the same, or do you like this kind of dynamic um, workflow that mm -hmm. just comes into existence for the, 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 uh, the combination of people that you just have. The combination of people that you just have. I, I think it's both. If that worked out great for you guys, that's awesome. And then I think if we can do more together too, then you can, in principle, accelerate that progress. So, but in this event, we only had so many people, right? So you guys were going off there. You had your own team. That's great. Um, in America, we only had a few people, so we can only do so much. Um, both work. I mean, any way that works, just c trying to keep keep to the to the end goal of okay, we're actually generating some economic significance out of this too, that we're creating real products at the end of the day. So, 
uh, what was what happened with you guys was great I think and just making it better on one side and the other so both on a on a collaboration within a group and then between the groups too so that'll be good like imagine breaking down like we take on a, a larger project that's more complex like designing a car and we actually do that effectively in five days with a bunch of teams each team you know maybe each location focuses on one one module and then they maybe all come together and bring their modules all to one place even or something yeah just rapid development that's that works i mean one model is the short window of opportunity where there's just a bunch of people so you can create a model an operational model that actually works while producing like com comparing back to software software does that but people don't so much have to be co-located because it's all virtual here you got to have much more including the co-location with resources but the idea is how do we really make that work so it's a it's a better procedure than what we have right now right now you have one company another company all of them hundreds thousands repeating the same thing that's super wasteful so what we're trying to set here is paradigm okay we're actually very deliberately all coming together and working on the same thing to finish that and be done with it so we can move on to other things which is ultimately higher pursuits or personal evolution or human evolution or freedom um, through taking care of the economy first so like the bigger picture is okay uh, can we attain some freedom in our lives because we have economic abundance um, so I mean the, the bigger much bigger picture there is okay are we collaborating on effective products that can be mainstream products not just some fringe hobby stuff this is about real economic significance for the products that get developed I mean the, the, the same old same old which is uh, not your China or some centralized factory but every community with a micro factory so keeping that vision okay let's create those micro factories where fab city concept micro factory concept where all the cities produce what they need kind of deal which just distributes I mean just just a better design a better distributed design based on a back from the very first principles of energy income from the Sun being very distributed and therefore the economy could be very distributed um, so so keeping the bigger picture in mind does that kind of explain it or how, how this fits into the context Yeah, sure. I was uh, mainly interested in how you viewed uh, the steam camps, but yeah, I, I completely agree with this. Uh, the, the global context of, as well, of course. Yeah, but uh, yeah. Not yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I'd like to have a steam camp where in those five days, like, you know, we start on a Raspberry Pi tablet, but you can only do so much with like four people working on it, right? The idea there is, okay, let's have 500 people working on it. 24 camps, 24 people. We can really get that done if we have an effective process. That's that's the simple vision. And and when you do that successfully, that changes the world, I think. And that's that's kind of the vision here. There is that potential. I mean, that's not impossible. It's completely doable. Nobody's doing it yet. I think it's going to be happening everywhere within a few years or decades. Years or decades. But it's just not happening yet. But it's just not happening yet. Well, there is a whole field software engineering that uh, that studies how people work together on software and what's it called? Not... What's it called? Software engineering. It's a uh, so software engineering is a field that uh, works on how to write software, but also how you do this in organizations. And uh, well, the final word has not been set on that. So the, the whole Scrum uh, thing, for example, comes from the field of software engineering, but. Mm -hmm. There are in embedding such a workflow into uh, large organizations is uh, pretty uh, difficult, um, actually. But, yeah, well, it, I don't know, think it's yeah, gonna. Well, it's, it's, it's open sourcing. It makes it much easier, I think. So if everything's open, then uh, there is it's much easier to have small teams kind of independently working on different topics so that makes it perhaps easier it's the coordination but nobody wants to have coordination because everyone's competing so by design that's not yeah. going to happen from the big companies right now 
So someone else has to do it. Yeah. No. I think that's pretty clear. Yeah, about uh, the steam camps, um, to work together on uh, product development, I'm totally for, of course. But uh, I think the, the main focus now for uh, the first months, maybe the first year, yeah. should be on uh, rapid prototyping, like getting yeah. the printers really uh, yeah. perfected, uh, printing, PCB making, the software workflow, um, yeah. educating people and that. And then you can have like mass uh, collaboration like certain days that you work uh, online together on a, on a large scale to do the actual product development with all the printers already running and uh, the possibility to, to prototype on a large scale. So yeah, that's, yeah. that's how I see it. Like, first of all, getting the printers and uh, the, the whole education about uh, KiCad, FreeCAD, uh, yeah, the whole thing. Yeah. And oh, once once true. we have enough people uh, learn, uh, knowing how to do that, yeah. then you can get the, the mass collaboration going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that, that's exactly right. That's, that's a good perspective in that, yeah, we kind of are forgetting that we don't necessarily have all the, the tool chains developed yet, but that's what we're developing. So we are mixing development yeah. and training. At the same time, yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's that's what uh, what I personally want to focus on for uh, uh, at least uh, the next few months. Uh, um, for uh, looking forward to to the the camp in Hamburg, uh, yeah. getting the, uh, the universal and the universal mega and the whole software tool chain. Yeah, and then uh, start developing the, the Raspberry Pi tablet. Uh, the yeah, looking for, uh, further into the Arduino, the power electronics, uh, and yeah, the battery, the battery packs and, and stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, now focus on, on the on the printing and and the PCB milling and stuff. Yeah. 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 No, it's true. It's true. We're kind of biting off a big big chunk. But that's why I want to get just keep rolling. You know, keep getting more people involved, mm -hmm. and I think that's that's what we're doing. So that's good. Yeah, there's there's a lot of interest, uh, a lot of people getting um, uh, inspired by, by the idea of yeah. the the micro factories, the the collaboration. So yeah, I'm getting quite a positive response here in uh, in Belgium. Yeah, uh, from several um, uh, several hacker spaces, uh, people that want to contribute in, in uh, software and hardware development. So. Yeah, it's gonna take off, I think. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I think we're on the right track. It's we're you know we're uh, just early days. And actually, people that want to make a living out of it. Yeah. Not just the hobby wise, but uh, setting up production and uh, wanting to to build bigger machines, bigger CNC machines that can handle uh, uh, big plywood plates and stuff. Absolutely, so, yeah. absolutely. It's and that's what just to now get into the summer of extreme design build. I was thinking about that, and some clarity was emerging to me too that the first month we're going to build everything. So, um, and Michelle, Holger, Holger, Chris, myself, we're going to be there, but we're going to start right away. We're going to have the one inch axis, we're going to put the torch on it, we're going to put a welder on it, and that's called a metal 3D printer and a CNC torch table. We're going to do all those little machines like. For example, when you say the second universal axis in a steam camp that's at the beginning of the month, because we'll, we'll kind of run this summer as a steam camp at the beginning, then we will do the double axis, but that'll be a collaborative project where, okay, now you get a partner, combine your printers. So now you got two Z axes and stuff like that. So, but yeah, focus on the enabling tools, which are torch tables, metal printers, large printers, mills, drills, CNC of all kinds. and. So yeah, yeah, that's definitely it. Did you have time already to, to look into the, the torch table? Me, no. Uh, yes. No, but but yeah. look at that. Like So we have that prototype sitting in uh, in a workshop here. That's got like the automated gas control system, but we can even go like, so that we don't have the complexity blocking it, we take the existing one inch axis, something that we can say, say there's 24 people there. We can print all the parts and assemble that all in like a couple of days. And then just we just put a regular torch, like not much, just Z axis that controls it up and down and a torch with like without even gas control. 
we could make that cut useful parts like for example for the shredder we, we need metal blades for the shredder which is first month work for getting big plastic printing means you got to get free filament essentially at a few cents per kilogram right so we we use that tool chain we cut out blades and stuff like that with the existing tool chain so focus always on we use what's already there but we continue continue to improve it so i think using that modular design the module based design to make it happen so yes i think that theme of developing the tool chain is this huge and that that's just going to explode pretty soon and i'm glad to say that the one guy who's signing up for the whole summer there's two guys now uh for the whole summer the one guy wants to set up um, essentially a, a 3D printing micro factory in Mexico. So once again, people who are talking about enterprise, this is not like leaving the hobby realm into, okay, now we're going to start getting into production. So that, that direction I'm, I'm seeing is a positive, positive good change. Yep. No, it's all good. It's all good. Nice. So let's just love each other and go forward. <laughs> No, it's good, it's good. But yeah, let's like communicate openly. Like, um, And the other thing, actually, I'll bring this last thing up about uh, relating to each other. Um, as the leader, like a strong leader of a project, I get this bullshit all the time coming to me, which is about me being Jesus. And I don't like it. So the dynamic that we need to be very clear about is that we're all collaborating. And that this one quote comes to mind. I actually wrote a page on this because actually some situation made me do that recently. It's called Working with OSE. Please take a look at it. Let me just put that link in there. I'll make it very explicit. I'll make it very explicit during the, the Belize build and during the Summer of Extreme Design build. Let me paste that in. Um, but the idea is we're here, like, if you're liberation, like, basically, if you've come here to help, you, you've come to the wrong place. But if your liberation is tied up with mine, then we can work together. In other words, we work as partners and collaborators. Not this thing that uh, the dynamic I get uh, sometimes here in OSC is people are looking at me like, you know, I'm the leader and they need my blessing to do stuff. It's not like that. It's supposed to be about a more collaborative approach because that means if you're there, like for me personally, that means you're not getting what you need out of that. It's not your vision and drive. And that absolutely needs to be there because then the fruits of the project you can enjoy, not like my praise. And I bring that up explicitly because, I mean, I, I, I run into this here and there. And I um, just wanted to bring it out into the open uh, because if, if we're here together on our team and we have a common vision of making the distributed world happen, the open source micro factories, that's awesome. But if there's a few people in a room that are in it for other reasons, they're going to burn out and get tired. But I just bring this up as a as a closing personal note. Does that make sense? Any comments on that? Or I think that was very well said. Um, and I th maybe it's something also which can like like really be you know like Debian they have the, their like culture yeah kind of um, uh, charter. Maybe that can be something which is almost fundamental to OSC. Not necessarily the products themselves, but but the culture and the yeah. way of working. A bit like the Agile Manifesto, yeah. um, something like that. What do you call? What do we call this thing? The OSC social contract. It sounds contract sounds like a transaction, um, which for me at least reminds me of a transactional economy. Uh, so I bring that up because um, Debian social contract, right? Debian yeah, but contract. Debian, they are, if you look on their structure, it's, it's actually not as um, decentralized as I think that maybe you want to focus on. Um, oh. There is there is a lot of, let's say, um, there, there are some clear hierarchies and structures which are not as obvious if, unless you go a bit deeper into it, uh -huh. um, of who can uh, like provide packages and then who are the ones who decides which ones get into the next level, things like that. So okay. this is my personal. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I but, started a page work, the working with OSE thing. Uh, if you guys want to fork it, fork it. How about manifesto? OSE or manifesto, yeah. Charter? OSE charter? <laughs> yeah, charter sounds good. Charter is like a beginning of something, right? Uh, it can be. Um, also human rights charters. Mm. So yeah, it, that works. Neutral manifesto might seem a little bit left-leaning for some, I guess. <laughs> mm. Mm -hmm. I'll see Charter.
Love it. All right. Okay. Okay. And Benedict, can I just mention one last thing? Uh, what you mentioned about social, like, um, uh, researchers seems really interesting. Um, and what? Especially if what, what sounds interesting? Sorry, I didn't get that. What you mentioned about the data scientists coming in and looking at, at how this work can be done as effectively as possible, um, especially if they have some, some knowledge in topology and, and like information integration, but applied on development and version controls in complex systems. That, that sounds really interesting. Just a side comment. Yeah, thanks. By the way, can, could you introduce yourself? I, I, I think I haven't, uh, I don't know who you are. <laughs> All right, <laughs> sorry. And I can't manage to start my, comp my uh, uh, let's say, video either. Probably I blocked it at some point. So yeah, I'm Andreas and I'm currently trying to find or recruit more, um, especially external uh, instructors for the STEAM camps, basically. Um, and, and you're based in, in so, Europe? Yeah, so I'm sitting in Sweden. Um, ah. So in the daytime, I, I'm, I work for an IT company, and then and in the evenings, I'm trying to find people uh, to be instructors, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Great. Well, thank you all for, for the feedback. That's, that's good. I think we're going forward. Um, anything else we got to cover here? Because otherwise, I mean, we're pretty much going to post the event. Like, I want to see if I can get it up tonight um, for the New Zealand Boston slash Richmond. And we'll go from there. Just keep going at it. Uh, I just wanted to mention I uh, posted a link to um, some interesting talks about open source development. Uh, that were held at FOSDEM in, uh, in Brussels, uh, beginning of February. Uh, and yeah, it's about uh, KiCad, uh, FreeCAD, and all kinds of things. Um, Yorick talked there also, oh, yeah. uh, and he mentioned that he uses uh, also uh, GitLab to collaborate on architectural projects with uh, several uh, architects um, spreads over the world, so uh, they have an international uh, architecture uh, studio, sort of, mm -hmm. and they use GitLab. So um, I'm gonna contact him and uh, and also to ask in what manner that they use it. Yeah, uh, he was the person who wrote uh, the GitLab uh, um, the the Git module for FreeCAD, but he doesn't use it himself. He says they have a workflow using GitLab. So uh, mm. yeah, there's some interesting talks. It's all about uh, FOSDEM is all about uh, open source um, software mostly, but also hardware development more and more. Mm. Yeah, I'd like Very to go there next year if possible. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, me too. Me too. Uh, now it was overlapping with uh, with the Steam Camp. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. the last two, uh, two days. But next year, I wanna wanna be there. Yeah, it's more and more about the hardware development, also. Yeah, I talked to Luke, one one person who went there. Like he was asking about. I asked him, "Hey, let's build something big, like with a bunch of people, like a hundred people in a day, you know, like build some big machine, like a big printer or even a tractor or something, whatever." Uh, the, oh, I think on, they on the event. Yeah, year. yeah, like right at the event, like yeah. before or after, just build something big so we can. Um, Collaborate with all the software people who would appreciate that kind of hands-on experience. Yeah, that would That'd be, be great. great. Let's yeah, try yeah. That. next year we will be ready to do something like that. We'll be ready at that time. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, great. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good, everybody. So yeah, go team, go, and we'll be in touch. Okay. See you next week. Okay. Bye, -bye. Um, bye bye. Ciao, guys. Ciao.